In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust to the tight slots formation in Madden 23 and be able to defend this formation relatively well. Now, this is going to come out of the dollar three two defense. If you want to get my entire dollar three two defense, I do believe that it's probably the top defense post patch for a couple different reasons. If you want to get access to my full ebook on this, it explains exactly how to run it. A couple different variations, including an incredible four man loop pressure. Make sure to join the Patreon. That's only gonna, that's only uh, ten dollars. And the link to sign up for that is going to be in the description. It gets you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks, including uh, the Dollar 32 defense. We've got over 25 different offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as numerous updates uh, to those ebooks to make sure that they're constantly uh, kind of routinely updated to be effective. So if you want to get access to that, that link's in the description. But I want to talk about Dollar and I want to talk about tight slots halfback week, specifically this play that a lot of people are running um, since the MCS. That is the play Flood, uh, which Henry ran to perfection uh, in the Madden Bowl, as well as the Ultimate Wild Card. Now, real quick uh, coaching adjustments, real quick conversation on that. Uh, we're just going to put our auto alignment to base align. And then for our zone coverage here, what I like to recommend is to put match on. I do think that it's best uh, the way the game plays this year. So DB Fire 2 obviously is our base play. Now, I want to talk about the base blitz, and then we're also going to talk about adjusting to our opponent. I think that one of the most underrated pieces of defense is adjusting to your opponent and what they do. And this varies formation to formation, varies opponent to opponent, it varies play to play. But we're going to give you kind of a framework, I think, for that and kind of a process that you can think through different types of adjustments. So uh, for the pressure to work best out of dollars, specifically against tight, I'm going to show you a couple different variations. But you'll see here that this is one little trick that I've started doing. You can flip your formation and it will automatically bring that other corner down just like that. And then you can show blitz and those corners, you see how they won't move. So I can get my safeties in the box and I can have those corners properly aligned and it's not gonna cost me a ton of adjustments. The problem, however, against tight is what you're gonna about to see. You're going to notice that sometimes these blitzers, they run into one another off of the edge. And this is really, I think, one of the biggest keys to why tight is such an effective offense this year because if you look at this, because of the bumping, because of the movement, because of the way these kind of, I call it force field, where they like run into a force field almost, you see like this guy over here, even though he's completely untouched, right, he's not going to be a threat to get pressure. And really this guy over here, had they slid their line to the right or something, probably would have been easily picked up. And now at this point, I can throw my drag, I can throw my flat, I can throw my corner, right? I have a lot of different things that I can throw because the pressure is not home, uh, is not getting home uh, cleanly. The best way to solve this problem is to basically, and this is why baseline press is so good, if you watch, it's going to move these guys, these two guys in particularly, outside of those wide receivers. So now if I stand about right here, what you'll see is the pressure will come in consistently faster, significantly faster um, than it did previously. And we still get some of this random bumping specifically on the left side, but by and large, this is pretty pretty clean pressure. And this is a lot different of a picture than what we just previously showed you, okay? So part of this is like, against each formation, you have to understand what's the best strategy to get your pressure to come in. Um, another quick little thing that you can kind of experiment with is um, is this right here where you pinch your D-line. Uh, this is going to be helpful for stopping the run. So if I wanted to pinch my D-line, this formation you can actually do that and have some level of success. You'll see, again, it just cleans up these blitz angles. And you can see right there, not only is this going to service as really good run defense, but this is also going to service as cleaning up the pressure. And so now you see here we get that nice clean pressure off of both edges. So there are some things that you can do to dollar uh, and it makes it highly adjustable, which is part of why I think it's so a it's such a good defense this year. So again, we're just going to press. We're going to move these safeties down. Now, if you think about tight slots for a second, one of the things that I think is important, especially as we talk about stopping a specific setup or play, is understanding that every formation has strengths and weaknesses, right? Um, and typically in tight slots, one of the main things that is the biggest strength of this formation, I think, is the alignment of the formation, but I also think another strength of this formation is in the route combos specifically to the left side. This play flood is probably the number one play 
in the formation. And one of the most meta setups is basically this right here. We're going to have a streak that's going to clear out all the zones. We're going to have a, a basically a flood concept on the right. And then we're going to have a backside, what I call a little pin concept, um, where we essentially have this tight end dragging across. And then we have this guy as kind of our check down read over the middle. So this is essentially like sail to me um, or flood. Now, if we take a look at this, everything in the play is going to the left side. And this is very true um, of a lot of different plays in this offense. And so what we want to do defensively is we want to load up our, defend, our defenders uh, to that side. So potential coverage adjustments that I like to do is we're going to take this defender on the right side and we're going to put him into an outside third. We're going to take the safety on the right side and we are going to put him into an inside third. So he's going to kind of help a little bit with that, um, that, that post route right there. And then over here on this side, we've got to have a hard flat zone that's going to be able to defend that quick running back flat. In this example here, we're going to have this deep half, which that's going to defend the corner or the, I apologize, the streak. And then now this vertical hook has, we have some different things that we can do with this. So if we watch how this play works out, and I'm just going to run it just like this, and we're going to take a look at the snapshot and instant replay you're going to see here that this is pretty decent flood defense. Now, um, it's not complete, and I'm going to explain how to make it complete here in just a second. But what you're going to notice is if you look at the picture that the quarterback has, and this is really important when you're labbing defense, what you're going to see here is what can we really, realistically, what can we throw? Um, again, we want to go ahead and say that uh, typically your user is going to be in this middle of the field area so we're going to be right here the tight end that can't run his route properly because he has this bumping uh which is an which is actually to our advantage the main route that he can throw is really this corner right here this is what he's gonna probably throw um if they are running if they are indeed running the play flood now what we can do to kind of counter that corner route is several different things that we can do uh, one of the things that I like to do is very simple. We're just going to press, move these guys down. And then another little tip that I like to, to utilize here is we can actually go ahead and man that linebacker up onto the corner route. So now the flat route is going to take the running back route. The man up is going to take this corner route and kind of make it a little bit delayed. It's not going to completely bag it, but it will make it delayed, especially if you have a deep route knockout there. And then now what we're left to do is basically defend this high-low over the middle of the field. And there's a couple different ways that we can defend the high-low over the middle of the field. One of them is a little riskier, um, but I actually don't think it's a terrible strategy. And that is essentially to take this safety right here. And we're just going to man him up on the tight end. So he's going to take that tight end drag. And then we're going to essentially go here and kind of poach onto the post, as you can see right here. So it makes this throwing window that people like to utilize out of the play flood significantly less open when you man up and you have zone help. Now right here, you could, okay, you could throw this with an outside passing, but again, if you have a KO, deep route KO, that's potentially a KO right there. You have this guy here. And then from a cross man perspective or from man, using, using man ups, this safety right here is going to help kind of limit that drag route like you can throw that but that's going to be a two to three yard gain and then you're kind of helping on this post now that's kind of just one element of how you could defend this really really popular play another way uh, that i like to defend this play is we could kind of essentially do a little bit of an inverse work where we're going to take this safety we're going to man him up onto that streak and then from there we're going to have both safeties manned up on the outside slot receivers and then this outside guy over here, we're going to put him in a deep half. So he's going to kind of narrow in and help with anything deep over the over on that right side. You could also, I think, justify just putting him in a basic soft squat because most people on that side, they're not going to run. Most people that run tight slots, they just don't run route combos to the right side outside of a tight end out route or a corner route uh, that's also typically to the tight end. So you could even man him up on the tight end right there. The other beauty of this is now you have this guy this hard flat which will take away typically the running back route and now you can put a significant amount of energy if you take that linebacker put him in a mid read or something like this to take away the post now you could put a significant amount of energy if you wanted to into i'm going to take the corner and as you can see right there it severely limits other things that they can do offensively so 
this is kind of just a, again just a little bit of a walkthrough in terms of like okay if they're running flood how can i defend flood and also i want to look at it the bigger picture how can i defend the entirety of this formation there you're not not every defense is going to stop every offense right you can't have one setup and it's just going to bag a complete formation generally speaking especially if you're playing a really a player but what you can do is you can key in on how do i stop the number one or two concepts that this formation brings to the table and force my opponent to play left-handed i think that's one of the biggest keys to playing defense this year so example uh one of the things that you can also do is let's say we know that people that run tight slots typically they like to send five out so if i wanted to get an additional player in coverage all i need to do is take that slot receiver or that slot corner and man him up on the running back now this completely changes the adjustments that i can do i can man up uh, i can man up that outside corner on the slot receiver which i think is actually not too bad of an idea and then we can have um you know we can create a coverage that looks more so like this which I think is also very advantageous. So let's say we play flood, you know, we will do that man up right there. Now, if you think about this from an adjustments perspective, really the main thing that I have to do defensively is I'm going to have to basically utilize user over here on the right. Well, what I can do with that cross man is I know that the tight end is generally speaking going to be on a deep corner or a deep out route. And then I can essentially put all my energy into this left side receiver. So again, it's just another example of how we can try to force them to play left-handed. We're not going to be able to stop everything, but we can stop some things. And utilizing dollar, I think, is really good because it's a symmetrical formation, because it's significantly, um, like I said, the biggest key is the symmetry. So the fact that it looks exactly identical on both sides is actually super, super valuable, especially for playing zone, because there's so many adjustments that you can do from dollar that you can't really do from other formations. Um, so, you know, again, these are some different tips and tricks for how to stop tight slots halfback week, specifically the play flood. We're gonna be, if you guys enjoy this video, we're gonna be doing some more videos kind of talking about just specific meta plays and how to bag them and how to actually play good, solid defense with them and thinking through a process. Defense is a lot about thinking through the process of what it actually takes to stop somebody out of your base defense. And instant replay is a really big piece of that. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you wanna get my entire $1.32 defensive ebook where we go super in detail on this stuff, Make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only $10 to become a member, and it gets you access to all of our Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks.